And here's a really good question that I, I think everyone would be interested in hearing is what is the, your advice, George, you know, for students in Kenya and other students around the world? Well, I have to speak advice for the students like me here in Kenya or any part in the world. First, cope with failure and learn from mistakes. Second, love yourself. Love yourself and appreciate who you are. Third, be a good person. When you become a good person, people will appreciate. They will be able to, they will be able to help you, give you support whenever you need when you become good. Fourth, know the keys of success. Know the keys of success. Keys to success is definitely working hard. Fifth, find your find your passion. Your passion. Find what you are passionate at and do what you are passionate. That will lead you to success. Finally, put God first. Say that last one. Say it again, George. Put God first. Put God first. George, I think if, if everybody in the world were like you, we'd have it, we'd be in a different place, that's for sure. It's um very it's it's amazing to hear you say those things, George. And it's it's an inspiration, yeah, you know, even to me. So thank you very much. And George, thank you for sharing your time with us tonight. You know, it's really, really nice to see you. And I know it's the middle of the night for you. Um, but please know that all of us at St. Mark's Church. And the Mama Etta Foundation, you know, holds you in our prayers very deeply. We are, as I said, very inspired by your dedication and commitment to your studies. And you are definitely a role model indeed. So continue doing well, George. And thank you again so much for being with us tonight. It's great to see you. Okay, good luck. So moving on to our next guest this evening, I would like to introduce uh, Noriega and Karen. Uh, it's great to see you two again. I remember like yesterday, walking onto your incredibly beautiful farm and meeting your children. Noriega, he's considered a leader among farmers that we assist uh, in, in Ziwa. He offered to use his farm for a field day uh, sponsored by the Mama Etta Foundation where farmers were trained on how to use a treadle pump for irrigation. <clears throat> it's a wonderful example of how Mama Etta Foundation brings uh, new technologies to farmers that are low cost and easy to use to promote more efficient water irrigation. So good evening, George, uh, Noriega and Karen. <laughs> it's great to see you. And um, I just wanna ask you as well, a couple of questions to start out. Can you tell us a little bit about yourselves and your family? Hello guys, my name is Noriega and my wife Karen. Um, I'm very happy to see you for now, and, and I'm very happy for Mama Hata Foundation for her support. And my life is very so typical, let us there, before I, before I start to to go to rehabilitation center in Abbey district. And when I complete for my six months, I come and continue work, farm, farm working. And for now I'm planting vegetables, maize, um, and also fishing. I've already started fishing. I have motor port uh, and um, I was already LF four people who taking time to rehabilitation. And my family now is very happy, happy. Rather than How many children do you have now? I have three children. Three children. You, three they children. must have had a lot of friends. There were so many children around your farm when we saw you last. I know, it is only three children. First yeah. one, uh, that is in for 15 years. Yes. Second, uh. 13 years and 10 years. Where did you grow up? Uh, where did you grow up? 
Hai Maizel. I grew up in in Siwa. I grew up in Siwa and I start in two the 1993 start drinking alcohol very badly <laughs> until 2016 when I go to rehabilitation. So um, my family now is very, very, very happy for my Maeta Foundation and for myself for being Noriega, your your past life you mentioned when you were an alcoholic. Uh, how how did it affect your your social and economic well being? So it is. Uh, when you when you were you know your your past life before when when you were an alcoholic, I know it was difficult for you. What was that like? Um, uh, how did that affect your family? Life is very, very, very hard when I was drinking in alcohol. There is no food in the house. Children are not going to school. Myself, not, I was not wearing clothes like now. I was very poor. I was beating my wife every day, looking for money, small that. Yeah, <laughs> give me, give me money. I want to go and drink. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you get out of it? What changed? Mm, I was, I was, I was at at, at, at very early in the morning. So I hear somebody there tell me, "I want you to reform." And I'm, I'm, I'm telling him, "Why?" Because you are a very good person, that worker, every now and then you fish, you have, you have vegetables there, what, but you waste the money. And I'm asking him, how, how do I, how do I reform? He told me, let's go where I know. So he took me to rehabilitation and I agreed for six months without seeing my children, without seeing peers. And I start now, and I start now to, to, to reform. When I come back, I join Stan and Tan and Mama Eta Foundation. So my heart, my life start going very good until now. That's great. No, that's, that's amazing. It's a, quite a transformation you've had and it really is an, an incredible story. To, to hear where you've come from, you know, and to see your farm, it's absolutely spectacular and all of the variety of, of crops that you grow. And, and now you're fishing, as you said, on that lake, you're right on this, this great lake that you can utilize as well. So it's, it's really spectacular. And how, how old are your children? My children is, first of all, for the 15 years. Second one, 13, and last one, 10 years. Are they future farmers? Yeah. <laughs> <You're honest. laughs> well, it's uh, really nice to see you guys. And um, I just have one more question for you, Noriega and Karen, is what would you like to say uh, to, to your friends over here in Florida and um, around the country? I, 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 I really tell them to, to reform and come where I'm, I am now and go to church. And continue with very good life. Thank you, guys, and my foundation. When, 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 when will you come back to Kenya? Oh, it, it couldn't be soon enough. <laughs> I want you cook. Yes, you. We'll bring everybody with us. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yes. I, yeah. I, We're I, long over. 
I want to come and take you with water boat and fishing. Yes, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds great. And Stan, thank you. And, you know, thank you as well for all of the hard work you do, you know, for our farmers. Can you, can you just take a quick minute and explain, you know, how you have created th three clusters of farmers and how they work together to support each other? Yeah, um, I guess, uh, Matt, Matt uh, that, that's my question, right? Um, yeah, this this is Stan Tioni, um, the, the project coordinator for the Mamada Foundation. And um, we have three communities that we work with. Um, there is one in Ziwa, where Noriega belongs. Uh, we have one in Kabuson and one in Kamoiwa. Um, so what happens is um, these are people who have uh, similar needs and similar challenges within the community. And uh, they, they come together in, in a group that makes it easy for us to organize trainings on different topics in, in agriculture. Um, so our main key areas of focus uh, are mainly dairy and uh, poultry farming, uh, maize farming, and we also have horticulture. So um, we normally put these people together in a group uh, that we can be able to uh, train them and perhaps uh, take them to a field demonstration site where they're able to uh, see different technologies. Uh, we just concluded a big field day that we had at Noriega site um, the other day in March, where the farmers came and saw the different vegetables that Noriega has been planting. And it is really amazing uh, working with, uh, with such communities because within those communities, we have leaders inside those communities, community leaders that have been elected by by the groups. So these people uh, coordinate and work together with uh, myself to make sure that everything uh, flows smoothly within these three communities. It's very, very impressive, Stan. Um, and it's it's really impressive the amount of work that you've done to keep the farmers well supported and educated. You know, So on behalf of everybody here, we thank you so much for that and continue doing the hard work you're doing. Um, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't do it without you. Uh, and, you know, St. Mark's, thanks to your support, the foundation hired Stan two years ago. It's already been two years, Stan. That's amazing. Uh, and, and, you know, by, and he's done incredible work to, to support farmers by creating the communities uh, of accountability and support, encouraging farmers to diversify their crops, organize field days that bring farmers together to learn about techniques and products that can help them increase their yields and make them more, sustain, more sustainable and, and self-sufficient. Uh, the foundation is also grateful to our American friends, Steve Clark and Louis Kamiri, who are consultants working with Stan almost daily. Steve and Louis are dedicated volunteers who bring years of agricultural training and experience to the foundation. Well, uh, George, Noriega, Karen, and Stan, you guys, thank you again so much for being awake. It's so late in the night for you at two o'clock in the morning and meeting us. Uh, be assured we continue to hold you all in our prayers uh, for safety as you wrestle with this COVID and we hope your farms bear wonderful fruit this growing season and the lake is plentiful of fish and, uh, and, and fun times. Um, all, the, all the financial support you know that our students and farmers receive come from donations from friends of the foundation like, like all of you who have joined us this evening. But another huge part of our support comes from the Mama Atta Foundation board members. I wanted to give a uh, opportunity quickly for each board member to say hello and have them, you know, thank St. Mark's for the congregation's amazing supports. Just uh, I'll, I'll mention the name and if, if, if you would like to say hello and, and maybe state where you're from, that would be nice to hear from you. So uh, Jim Cook, hello. Oh, we have to unmute you there, Jim. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. I'm in my office right now, so I've, I've come very far for this, Harambe, but really appreciate it. It's really wonderful to hear to hear from uh, our friends over in Kenya. As I'm watching the pictures and hearing your voices, I, as you can imagine, I get teary-eyed. So thanks for being here, uh, both on, in Kenya and also all of you here at St. Mark's. Really grateful. Thanks, Jim. And we all know it doesn't take much for uh, teary eyes to, to start, so. <laughs> hi julie julie keller hello hey nate hi everybody 
It's so great to see you all. And I just want to say a huge, huge thanks to St. Mark's from the bottom of my heart. You have just been um, abiding friends of the farmers and the students. And uh, look what you've done. Um, just meeting a few people. Thank you, Nate. It's great to see you, Julie. Hi, Ron. Yeah. It's Ron McElhorn here. There he is. Hi, Ron. Here. Hey, everyone. I'm Ron McElhorn. I'm on the board and the treasurer of my madam. Actually, right down the hall from Father Cook, and I can run down there with some tissues. <laughs> if need be. Maybe but, a few boxes. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, everyone. Thank you for you know all your support and everything you can do you do for our friends in Kenya. So thanks again. Thanks, Ron. And hello, Cassie. Hi, everyone. I'm Cassie. I'm from Vietnam, but currently living in Canada. And I also want to thank St. Mark for everything that you done and your support to the farmers and students and also to the Mama Ada Foundation. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Cassie. It's great to see you as well. And our newest board member, um, not quite so new, but you know, within the year is Shelly Olds. Hello, Shelly. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Shelly and I've been a board member since Last June, it's hard to believe it's been almost a year, but I've known and I've loved and I've been a friend of the Mama Etta Foundation for many years. And I've got to say, it's humbling to be speaking uh, with so many of you from St. Mark's and longtime supporters of the foundation. You have been responsible for helping to raise children like George and to be families like Noriega and Karen for so many years. Your friendship and your generosity is inspiring as you walk the talk of being Christians. Last year, the Mama Ada Foundation provided scholarship for 230 students. Imagine that 230 students like George and we are assisting more than 150 farmers. The demand in Kenya never ends as more and more parishes and dioceses want to participate in the foundation. The only limitation is funding. Each year we strive to raise more than $100,000 to simply keep up with our current commitments. But imagine Imagine what we could accomplish with $200,000, $200,000. You'll see on the slide here, a list of ways you can give to support students like George or farmers like Noriega and Karen. We've also highlighted some different categories for giving amounts. For only $25 a month or $300 a year, you can send a student to school for a year, just $25 a month. For only $17 a month or $200 a year, you can provide enough seed and fertilizer to help a farmer feed her family. Another way to give is to bid on this amazing home in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. See if we have the Steamboat Springs, Colorado picture. Thanks to the generosity of St. Mark's members, Karina and Drake Osmont, you can bid through Sunday noon on a week's vacation. Your bid will go directly to the Mama Etta Foundation and you will have, there it is, look at that. Wow, you will have an amazing vacation in an amazing setting, in an amazing home, and because it goes to the Mama Etta Foundation, everyone wins. Please prayerfully consider making a gift, small or large, and thank you. Thank you so much to those of you who have already given to the Mama Ada Foundation this year. And thank you for those of you who will give tonight and in the days to come. If you can't support us tonight or in the coming months, but wanna stay connected with the Mama Ada Foundation, we would love that. We are an organization that's centered around friendship and we would love for you to join our village and be a friend of the foundation. 
Please remember to follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter too. Before we close tonight, I'm gonna ask Father Cook to say a few words and close with a prayer. Thank you, Shelly. Appreciate it very much. And, and thanks again for everyone uh, for being here. Thanks, Nate. Done a great job. I'm proud of you. You know, thank you, Stan, for your work over there on behalf of the Monumental Foundation. We're so grateful. And, you know, of course, thanks to our friends who we've been able to meet tonight, you know, briefly. That whisper Mama Etta made in my ear 16 years ago changed my life. And I'm so grateful to share that whisper with you tonight. And I've shared that whisper with you now for what the last probably 15 years at St. Mark's. The whispers that says, come meet my people. And like the voice of God calling us forth, we go, each one of us, with each dollar we give, with each prayer we say. St. Mark's, you are such a blessing. And you always give without hesitation. I cannot thank you enough for your support. I also want to say a special thank you uh, to my co-founder of the foundation, to Julie Keller, for her guiding hand and her commitment to the partnership. We could never do this without you. And uh, please stay strong and, and get well and know that the Mameta Foundation you know, loves you very much. Finally, I want to extend my gratitude to Mama Hatta herself, for whom our foundation is named. She is truly the matriarch of a village and the visionary of this ministry. Each night, believe it or not, and this is gospel truth, Etta and her friends set their cell phones or their alarms to go off at three o'clock in the morning. So they're about ready to get up. In this group of faithful women, each could... Each one of these women get down on their knees at their bed in their homes and they pray for an hour, united by their faith in Jesus Christ. I guarantee you that they are praying tonight for all of us. The, the stars twinkling above, you know, if you've ever been in Africa, that dark African sky. Those prayers matter more to Mama Etta than to anything else and her faith inspires my faith. We could not do this ministry without prayer and God's answering love. So to conclude tonight, I'm gonna to ask if we could just, you know, bow our heads and I'll say a prayer. Gracious God, you whisper to us in so many ways. Give us the courage to listen to your voice and to follow where you lead. Thank you for introducing us to our friends in Kenya for friends really do make our world. Inspire us to share from our abundance and to help change lives through our generosity, student by student, farmer by farmer. Watch over George, Noriega, Karen, Stan and their families, Mama Etta and her family and all of our Kenyan friends and watch over us too, dear Lord. Protect us from the ravages of COVID, bring plentiful rain for the crops, enable students in Kenya to attend school and continue to help us build strong and lasting friendships here and around the world. And we pray this in Christ's name always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dad. Thank you very much. And um, once again, we just want to say a big thank you to Noriega and Karen and Stan and George. It's uh, just so wonderful to see you. And thanks again for sharing your story with us and getting up in the middle of the night to join us. And and thank you everyone for being here tonight as well on this special occasion. We are, we're so excited to have you as a member of our special community. And don't, forget, and don't forget, friends make our world. Your gift tonight will change a life forever as it is doing for George and Noriega, Karen, and hundreds of others in Kenya. I look at my bracelets every day. I wear this since I was in, in Kenya and it, it reminds me so much of how we come together in friendship and, and it's, um, 
it's it's true to my heart. So thank you to everybody very much again. Asante Sana, thank you. Goodbye, God bless, and see you soon.